Welcome to ProGreekCon. My name is Don Allen III, and today we are going to make something like this. All right, so we got a lot of effects to cover. Let's get started. So I already have a uh, project open here, and the first step you're going to want to do is open a new composition. So go to Composition, New Composition, or Apple N. And for this project, I'm going to make it um, uh, 720p, square pixels, 24 frames per second. And the duration does not need to be 55 seconds. Let's go ahead and just make that 10. Background color black, and that looks all great. Hit OK. All right, so a couple things that we see going on in this effect are we have a text that kind of bounces in and out. Then we have lightning, we have flashing, and then we have a lot more lightning. And the whole time it's zooming. So the first step we need to do is create this text, especially that bouncing part of it. First thing we're going to do before that is create a new uh, solid. Go to File, you know, right-click in the menu here, hit New, Solid. And this is going to open up a palette, and uh, we're going to just call this Background, or BG. It's going to be the same size uh, as the comp, and any color is fine. We'll do, I'll do black and hit OK. You see this appears right here, and this is now our background layer. I'm going to right-click in this area again and collect a New Text. And right here, we're going to put whatever text we want. I'm going to say Power. And uh, I'm going to select a font called Futura. And I'm going to use it as a condensed medium. And I'm going to space it so it's a little bit closer together. Now I'm going to uh, increase the font size. One quick trick you can do in After Effects is um, select your mouse tool. And they have this awesome alignment tool over here. Now if you don't have this in your alignment tool, you can just go to Window, Align. And then it will appear on the right side of the screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, horizontally align it to the composition and then vertically align, align it. And what we get is our text is now perfectly centered in the screen. OK. So right now the text isn't doing anything. In order to get it to have that kind of bouncing effect that you saw before, we're going to go into the drop down menu of the power layer, go to uh, this little function called animate, and hit the little um, button. You're going to have lots of different options. And the one we're going to mess with is scale. So go ahead and click scale. And it's going to open up an animator one and a range selector. So I'm going to zoom in using this tool. And this kind of zooms into the timeline. Now we can see each individual frame. And I'm going to hit a keyframe. To start a keyframe, you're going to hit the stopwatch next to any option that has a stopwatch icon. This allows you to animate. So I'm going to hit scale. And then I'm going to go about 10 frames and hit another keyframe. And I'm going to go from 0 to 100. So now if I just uh, play it back, it's kind of a cool effect. It doesn't do too much. For me, it's a little bit slow. So I'm going to go ahead and move this in maybe to like 7 frames. Um, if you drag this button over here, the slider, to the end of your animation, you can have it loop over and over again so you can preview it. So a shortcut to do a RAM preview, which is a high quality uh, preview of your animation. You can do, you can hold control and press zero. And so now we see this is uh, kind of looping over and over again. You can see it playing back here, which is nice. Okay, so this is looking pretty nice. We're gonna go on to the next step. It's kind of making it uh, go across the screen. So right now all the letters are uh, scaling up at the same time, but we don't want that. We want them all to scale up individually. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to go to the uh, animator options here and go to add. And we're going to add a property. And the property is going to, oh, just kidding. I'm going to go to the animator option here. I'm going to go to range selector. And we're going to put the start of our range selector at the start of our animation and the end of it at the end of the start at the end of the animation. And then what we're going to do is change the, uh, the start to 100% or 0% based on how you want it to enter the frame. So now what we have here is I start, you know, we have 1% on frame 1 and then 100% uh, on frame uh, 7. So it's going to slide it across. Already this is a very cool effect. I might want to slow it down a little bit again. So let's go to like 8, 
A keyframes, and then let's see what that looks like. It looks pretty cool. Um, I might want to have a little bit more of a bounce effect, so what I'll do is I'm going to go uh, a keyframe before the last keyframe of like uh, two keyframes before, and I'm going to make the scale go more than 100%, so that it has to go past 100%, and then it's going to scale down, and that's going to give it a little bit of a bounce. You can see it really well on all the letters, especially with that R. It's like it has a little bounce to it now. Um, one thing you might notice is that this text is moving very fast, but there's no blur. So it looks very computerized. If you want to make this look more realistic, we could turn on this thing called motion blur. Now, in order to enable motion blur on any After Effects file, you need to first go to this option here. And this enables the motion blur for all layers in your, uh, in your composition. So go ahead and turn that on. And if you look, nothing happens because you have to also turn on the motion blur setting for your individual uh, layer. In this case, I have my text layer selected and this icon is the same icon as that. And you're going to go ahead and just check the box. And now what you'll see is the letters have a blur associated with how fast they move. And this adds an insane amount of realism to any kind of uh, text that you're doing. Okay, on to the next step. We have this going on here, it looks great. Let's play with some of the colors because if you remember it in this original composition, it starts off kind of uh, dark and then when the lightning hits, the, it turns brighter. So, how do we do this? Well, I'm going to go into the animator options and we're gonna add another property. And this one is fill color with the RGB scale. So by default, it starts off with red. It's already kind of a cool effect, but not what I'm going for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this red to uh, a dark gray. Why dark gray? Well, because it's going to look like it's, uh, it's like turned off. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you have anything underneath this range selector, it's going to go from that property to the next. Um, so I don't want to do that. I want this to happen kind of after. Um, but you know what? Just, just kidding. I thought of an easier way. Let's uh, erase the fill selector. Right now, we can just grab our text and make it uh, a gray color. Darker, make it a dark gray. There we go. So now you have this gray text. And then, let's say we want to get to, uh, we want to get to here, and we want the text to kind of brighten a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create our first effects preset, and that is going to be tint, T-I-N-T. You're going to grab it and drag it onto the layer here, or you can drag it and bring it onto the layer here. Either way will work. Tint is really cool. It will take any color that you give it and convert it into a different color. So in this case, it's gonna take that gray color and convert it into white. And then you can choose the amount to tint. So now you can kind of see where the blinking is gonna come into play. So as we're playing the animation, the text grows and then how about right here at like 20 frames? We have our first kind of uh, blinking. So I'm going to uh, first start off with zero tint and to start a keyframe, I'm gonna hit the uh, stopwatch icon. And then uh, I'm gonna go and look at the uh, effect in the selected layer. And as you can see, that is the first keyframe that just formed because we clicked the stopwatch. All right, we're gonna go a little bit forward and uh, make it blink, we're going to go in one keyframe, it goes from zero uh, tint to 100, and then back to zero. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a nice little blink. Let's see what it looks like in full speed. Nice. It looks like power turned on and off. I'm going to give it a second blink. Instead of having to do all this again, I'm just going to copy these frames, hit command C, and paste them. And now we have this kind of effect going on get two blinks great very great okay and then on the third blink we'll have a blink once and then from here we're going to have it kind of slowly grow into um, full color and we'll just have it go there so now instead of a blink which was over one frame it's going to kind of slowly go to that brighter one and that's going to be at the end of the animation so let's watch the uh, full thing now Nice, looks very good. Okay, next is the lightning. 
Now, this is all done in After Effects, so you don't need any external plugins. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to an effect called Advanced Lightning. Um, but before you do that, you got to create a new solid. It is where we're going to apply it. We're going to call this Lightning or whatever, Light. I'm going to call it Light. Make it the comp size. Hit OK. And uh, actually, no, no, we'll leave it at the comp size. You're going to grab the Advanced Lighting by searching Advanced lightning here and you're going to drag it on to your new solid now by default you're given these two points this is the uh, direction the directional form of lightning and it's going to be blue now you can change every single feature about this lightning and that's exactly what we're going to do first thing we're first we're going to change it from directional to strike this is going to make it only exist between exactly two points and i'm going to put them just outside of the comp frame like so Next, I'm going to change the uh, conductivity state to be much higher. I'll give it a little bit more turbulence um, and you know strength as it's animating. Next, I'm going to go to the forking. I'm going to reduce the forking. That's kind of just as you see, as you increase the fork, it's, it's adding uh, layers and it's adding branches. Um, but I just kind of want it to be a little bit lower. You know, this is also really preference too. For glow settings, I'm going to increase the radius a little bit, but then drop the opacity significantly. So it's kind of just like this blur. And I'm going to make it white. I'm going to do colors later. Actually, I don't like how thick that radius is. I'm just going to drop it down. There we go. Okay. Next, going to go into the uh, conductivity state. And there's a really cool function you can do. Um, where you hold a option and click on the stopwatch and it opens up this panel where you can type in a code. What I want this to do is I want the conductivity state to kind of always be moving. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna type in the code time uh, asterisk, which is, a mul which is gonna multiply by, uh, by let's say 13. So essentially what this is gonna do is it's going to make this conductivity state keep changing and it's, it's not going to stop. Without this function here, you're going to see that the lightning isn't going to do anything. It's not going to move unless you grab the points. But it's kind of nice to have a little code in there that's going to make it animate. Now, just for heck's sake, you know, the conduct, uh, conductivity state's at that variable right now. But you can change this, of course. You can make it whatever you like. Um, you can make it time times 400 or 300 and what you're gonna see here is just like you know it's rendering as it's playing right here we'll see the full speed in a second so right now it's like ridiculous it's like way too much lightning at least for my taste um, so I'm just gonna go to 20 and leave it down there great okay so it's looking pretty good we got the flashing we have the lightning um, now what I'm going to do to make the lightning appear only on the brightest keyframes of the word power is uh, I'm going to take this layer and basically chop it up so that it only turns on for the short periods of time that this is on, which is about one frame. To do that, there's a shortcut. It's shift command D. And if you don't like shortcuts, you can just select your layer and go to composition and uh, oh, wait, wait, oh sorry, layer and then go to Oh, forget about that. Just do the just do the the shortcut. It's Shift Command D, and what that does is that slices your layer um, into a point like this. And then you can take the first one, you can delete it, you can do whatever you want with it. So now, as you see, it only turns on right when the power turns on. And then I'm going to go a few frames later after the light turns off and hit Shift Command D again, and that also cuts the layer. So let's just see what the first lightning bolt looks like. That looks pretty sick. I like that. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit forward. Here's our next one. I'm gonna grab it, put it there, go a couple frames again and hit Shift Command D. Hold them all three of those things together. Looking good. Then we're gonna go to the third one. Oh, there's our next blink. Go a couple frames in, Shift Command D. Boom. And uh, we can just let it turn on and stay on there. I'll go to right about here. 
All right, let's watch the full thing. Again, RAM preview, which gives you a, a much higher quality preview is control zero. And it's gonna loop that. It's looking pretty good. Okay, now one of the you know other features that we did in this was um, it's moving forward the whole time. It's kind of moving towards you and it's got this kind of cool effect. So we're gonna do that now. Now in order to get that kind of movement, we need to create a camera, a virtual camera that is in 3D space. Now to give you a better perspective of what that means, I'm gonna turn this from one view, which is our current timeline view, uh, to two views, which is, uh, and we'll make the second view be a vertical view of our shot. So as you see, nothing happened because we don't have a camera um, installed here yet. So actually I'm gonna go back to one view, uh, create a new camera, and we're gonna keep it uh, at the settings. Let's make it a 50 millimeter camera and hit okay. We're then gonna turn on all the layers to be 3D layers by checking the box appropriate with the uh, 3D icon. And now if we go to the views, and turn it to two views and have the second one be a vertical view, we're gonna see this interesting shape here. Now what this is, is a top view of our, uh, of our camera. I have my camera selected right here. This is where the camera is, its origin. So you can move this around and you can see it's affecting, it affects your, your view. And this bar right here is the focal length. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the, uh, the text layer uh, which is power right here. And I'm gonna move it back in 3D space by grabbing the Z axis point, holding it down and moving it back. Now, as you see, it disappears. That is because I made the background a 3D layer, which I shouldn't have done. So I'm gonna turn off the background layer, turn off the 3D aspect, and now it's just, a, it's just it's hovering over there, but it's not a 3D layer. Now that our uh, text is farther back in 3D space, our lightning will now be f closer towards the camera. A good way to view this is I'm gonna click the camera rotation tool and just move it around. And as you can see, we have a nice little uh, a view here. The, the text is much farther in the background. Lightning is in the foreground. And then you can see it down there below in the pink, the ca how the camera's moving in response. Okay. So you already can do lots of stuff with that. I'm going to go ahead and go into one view so you can see this all better and zoom in just a little bit. Again, with the rotation tool, you've got lots of layers going on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the start of the keyframe and open up my camera options and go to transform. And I'm going to set the point of interest and the position to there, just starting a keyframe. Then I'm going to go to the end of the animation and put two more keyframes. And then at the end, I'm going to switch my camera tool to this one. You can do that manually by going to the camera tool option and selecting the Z track tool. And I'm gonna punch in it in a little bit. And as you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, the lightning moves a little bit faster because it is closer to the camera. Now, if we go in full speed, we're gonna see that the whole time while it's rendering, it's gonna be moving. <coughs> mm. The whole time it's rendering, you can see that it's going to be moving towards the screen. Sorry, I had something in my throat, that was awkward. Great. This is all looking really, really fancy. Let's make it fancier. Let's zoom in a lot more. See what that does. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. Looking pretty fancy. Okay, I can work with that. Um, great. Next thing. I'm not sure if you noticed it, but the text starts out of focus on purpose, and then as it moves towards the camera, it gains focus. That is a difficult effect to do with like a camera. It's like follow focus, pull focus, rack focusing, and we're gonna do that in After Effects. And the way we can do that is we can choose our camera settings and set up its aperture. So right now the depth of field is turned off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Next, we're gonna turn up the aperture a lot. And you're gonna see as we turn up the aperture, it's blurring everything. Now, as you see right here, uh, the aperture is so high that uh, it's making the uh, lightning too blurry. Can't even tell if it's lightning. So I'm gonna kind of bring it down just a little bit 
so that we can still tell it's lightning, but still have that depth going. And so now it starts out of focus, and as it's moving towards the camera, it gains focus. Oh, but look at that. It lost focus again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the focal distance over time so that it stays with the text. So I set a two keyframes here, and on the next keyframe, I'm just going to move the focus distance in so that we get a nice clean image on our text so that our eyes aren't hurting. There we go. So then the kind of focus stays with the text. Oh, and then it goes out of focus again. So let's go back and change the focal distance to the end of the key, end of the animation so that it is nice and sharp at the, all the way to the very end. Power. Let's try the whole animation. Cool, very cool, and it stays in focus. I want it to start off to be a little bit more out of focus, so I'm just gonna move the focal distance away. There we go, and then just put that at the start of the animation. Great. Hit play. Ooh, power. Look at that. Um, in the other one, I had the word true power come in and it just appears, just like in one frame. This time, I don't want to do that. I'm going to have it appear uh, like kind of fade in. So I'm going to copy my uh, power layer by hitting Command D. And it makes an exact duplicate. Just to make it different, I'm going to change the color to brown, so you, or not brown. I'll change it to purple and give it a little different look. And I'm going to move the power with the Y just right above power, power. We're going to make the word true. Just kidding. I can't spell at all. I'm going to change the font type to medium and I'm going to scale it down a lot. And then we're going to uh, fan it out so that it's kind of over the top. A little bit fancy make it a little bit smaller that's good and to make it fade in over time um, oh the reason why I did command D instead of creating a new text layer is it's going to preserve the motion blur that we applied to our previous text layer and it's also going to preserve the 3d aspect so that we don't have to realign it later and what's great is it's also doing the follow focus too um, so to make it uh, fade in over time, we're going to have to affect the opacity. So just go to drop down, go to text. Um, just kidding. Go to drop down of your layer, then go to transform. And then there's an option down here, opacity. The shortcut for opacity is T. So you press T, it just turns on the opacity for the layer selected. Cool. I want the opacity to come in right here, so I'm gonna start a keyframe by selecting the stopwatch. Moving in, and let's say right here, I want it to be at 100%. So we're going to go back to our first keyframe and set this out to uh, 0%. So that what we have is the word true is going to fade in over time. Looks really cool that way. True power. Look at that. Wow. Feeling it. Okay. One of the last steps of this tutorial is to add some color. And as you see, it's all in black and white right now, which could be its own cool effect. But let's add some let's add some color to this. One of the easiest ways to do that, I'm going to collapse all the layers, is to add an adjustment layer. Now, what an adjustment layer is is essentially a layer that affects all layers be beneath it. So I'm going to move my adjustment layer to the very top of the animation. Again, I right clicked over here, went new uh, adjustment layer, and I get this layer up here. And Anything that is applied to this layer will affect all layers below. In this case, I'm going to apply a curves adjustment, which affects the uh, lots of different color aspects of your shot. So in this case, it's an RGB color. You're given red, green, and blue, and an alpha channel. And if you select a uh, red or a green or a blue and move the curve, you can affect that level of blue and that level of red for that shot. So reducing the red curve will make it blue. Adding to the red curve makes it more red. Um, if you go to the green curve and reduce green, it makes it more magenta or more brighter green, however you want to use it. Again, for this kind of part, I would really hope that you use your own creativity and decide what kind of colors that you want to use for this effect. Um, maybe this kind of purplish color looks pretty cool. Let's see how that affects the lightning. Oh, wow. That's also yellow at times, too. Let's go ahead and preview this. 
Wow, that's a pretty cool effect. Kind of looks like Lakers or something. <laughs> um, power, boom, lightning, lightning comes in. That looks clean. I can work with that. Okay, this looks pretty. This looks pretty great. Let's see how similar it is to this one. Yeah. Ah, last step, a glow. I'm going to uh, to add a glow to the text when it's finally growing at the very end here, and that's going to kind of push this to the very edge, make it look really pretty. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the uh, power layer. We're going to go to our effects presets and search for glow. Great. Look for glow. Look for glow. Stylize glow. You're going to drag it and move it onto the power layer. And if you see here, we have a new effect that just appeared. You can change the radius. Oops. You can affect the radius of the glow like this. Um, you can affect the intensity of it. Um, but all I want to do really is have it grow over time. So I'm going to start a keyframe at the beginning of the animation, move forward in time, and then drag the radius up. And that's just going to add a lot of color and a lot of pop to our animation. Um, also, I'm noticing that this is kind of standing out too much against the purple. So I'm just going to grab the power layer and, and also hit uh, T, the shortcut for opacity, and just drop the opacity just a little bit. So it's just more faded into the background. Okay, let's take a look. Power. Boom. Lightning hits, lightning hits and it hits a lot and now we start to see the glow coming in getting that yellow color from the lightning really cool effect and i think we're good so thank you for watching procrecon my name was don allen the third and uh, let me know in the comments what you would like to see in the future or just send me an email or text me i don't know what you kids do these days just hit me up you know first episode so let me know what you want to have in the future.